Hey, this is Sin from Ministry um, in Dublin, Ireland at the Academy. Just did sound check a little while ago and uh, we're getting ready for uh, tonight's show. So we'll see how it goes tonight. Um, I, you know, it was very important and, and essential that we get the band back together um, after, um, you know, we decided, when Al decided to get the band put it back together and release Relapse, um, we knew that we wanted to get back out on the road and see how it felt, see how Al was doing. Um, he's in good health and good spirits and uh, the band sounds amazing. This is my favorite lineup, the best lineup I think that the band has ever had. Um, the band sounds great, everybody's getting along and we're all just really gelling together. Um, so I think that this is, you know, this was the right, the right step, the right move to release the record, to get on the road, and then um, hopefully start working on a new ministry album uh, next year, and hopefully another tour next year as well. A ministry gig in five words. Loud, aggressive, Sweaty, um, injuries, and euphoric. Definitely agree with that. Um, you know, it, we're we're always after that that high, and. Um, Success, I think, it has many different forms and different meanings for different people. Um, we all love what we do. We love music. That's the that's the bottom line. Um, so whether we're up here doing music or we're down here doing music, um, we're still you know gonna be doing it regardless of where we sit as far as success goes. Um, you know, to the the general masses, um, we'd be playing little clubs and, and we'd still be on that you know, that constant high. So we can be in front of 200 people or 200,000 people. It's the same thing for us. Um, once you lose that feeling, I think, then that's the time to get out. So um, we, you know, everybody, everybody looks at success differently. Um, but ultimately it's, it's, you do it for the love of, of the art, you know, of creating music and performing. And, and um, that's why we're all still here. Um, yeah, joining ministry was, a, it was a, a dream come true for me. I was a, a huge fan of ministry since, you know, back when I was in high school. So it was always one of the bands that was extremely influential in um, the way I write music. Um, so I, I always followed Al's bands, you know, the Revolting Cox, Thousand Humble DJ, the Lard, Ministry. I mean, those were all, you know, my, my favorite bands. So. When I got um, the way it came about is um, the, one of the bands that I was in before had the same booking agent as Ministry, and he introduced me to Al in about 2004, and um, we just sort of remained in contact for a couple of years. And when it was time for him to put the Revolting Cox back together, I got a call in 2005 um, saying that in 2006. The Revolting Cox and Ministry were going to go on tour together, and he asked if I wanted to play guitar for, for Revco. So, of course, I said yes. And um, I joined Revco on that tour. And right after that tour, Al asked if I was interested in writing music for the next Ministry album. And um, I ended up, you know, co writing half of The Last Sucker with Al. So, it's just, you know, it's just been a dream come true for me, and I couldn't be happier. And I owe, you know, every everything that I've got right now, you know, to Al and, and, to, um, and to the band. So, yeah, that's how I got into the project. I, I did hope, I always had hope, even when we went on the last tour, you know, we knew it was going to be the last tour. He had told us that, and he'd been saying that for a while. So we all knew that, but in the back of my mind I always hoped 
that the band would get back together. Whether I was in it or not, I'm just, you know, because I'm a, a big fan of the band, I just wanted the band to come back. I didn't want the band to end. So when I did get the call last year, um, yeah, I was, you know, extremely happy to, to, um, to be asked, you know, to come back into the band and to have a song on the new album as well. So, um, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. So I hope we um, have, you know, many more records and tours in years to come. I, I agree, um, for the most part. I think that, you know, you can, it depends who, you're, who you surround yourself with and what you choose to do. Um, when you agree to do this and be a part of this circus, we just know that we're gonna give up, you know, X amount of privacy. We're gonna give up, you know, certain things. We're gonna be away from our loved ones. We're gonna be, you know, it's gonna put a strain on relationships, you know, whether it's friendship or, or, or otherwise. Um, we just, you know that that's just part of it. But, like for me, for myself, when, I, when I'm not on tour and I go back home, I'm a very private, quiet person. And I, you know, I choose to surround myself with that. You know what I mean? So I'm not out partying or, or going to the clubs every night. That's just not me. So I have enough of um, that stability when I'm not on tour. When I'm not on t when I'm on tour, it's a different ball game. You know, you just kind of hang on tight, and, and you know, you just go along for the ride. Um, but it's never really been a, a problem for me. You know, and um, yeah, love and you know all that stuff. That's you know, it, it's it's tough in a normal nine to five job, you know what I mean, to have a relationship sometimes. And it's just a little bit harder for us because we're gone so, so much, but it's not impossible, you know, to have any of those things. Um, being on stage is a huge adrenaline rush. Obviously, we don't want anybody to get hurt. That isn't what, you know, what we, you know, seek out you know we don't want that we don't want we want everybody to have a great time um unfortunately with our style of music it seems to bring out it's, it's violence in people sometimes you know and um but that is not what we intend to do it's a huge rush when we see people just going crazy in the crowd you know we know we don't we usually don't know if people are getting hurt or not until afterwards um but you know, the more we see the people getting into it and getting crazy and rowdy, the more it feeds us. So, you know, we feed a lot of our energy off of the crowd. So we love seeing, you know, people moshing. And, you know, we don't care if people come up on stage and stuff, but it's, it's a security thing now. So everybody has to be careful with that sort of thing. But, um, you know, we love the crowds going crazy for us. So I think every band does. That's a hard one to answer. I'm just gonna go with one, one that, I, I don't think I can answer my absolute favorite, but I'm just gonna give one of them. Um, man, I'll probably say Land of Rape and Honey. I never met those guys, but we're all big Deep Purple fans. And um, it's really funny that, um, funny but strange, odd, the day he passed away, for whatever reason, that morning, I didn't know yet. And on my iPod, I was listening to Deep Purple, like, a lot. And, you know, I listened to him every now and then, but I was just, I was listening to them a lot. And then later on that evening, I heard that he had passed away, which is really strange. Because yep. I hadn't heard Deep Purple in a while. But that morning, I just happened to, to be listening to it. So, you know, it's always sad. It, it always hits a spot, you know what I mean? Other musicians, um, I don't know what it is. We seem to have this kind of brotherhood. And, you know, when somebody passed away, it's just really sad. And, and it's a huge loss. I mean, you, you know, immensely just influential, you know, uh, amazing talent there. So, you know, it's a sad, it's a sad thing.
the music scene in LA has definitely changed. It's a lot different than it was years ago. I, I was still able to catch the tail end of the whole 80s hair metal thing. I was like a teenager and I was still able to see, I used to go down and see like Motley Crue, Rat, Wasp, some Poison. Um, like I saw, I got to see all those bands, um, Armored Saint. Um, so I feel lucky that I got to see some of those guys, you know, but back then it was just crazy. It's like every weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, on the Sunset Strip, it was just packed with people everywhere. And uh, it's not really like that anymore. I actually don't spend a lot of time, you know, down on the Sunset Strip anymore. Um, and I really don't know what the scene is like there anymore. It's been just a little, you know, one thing popping up and another thing popping up. And I, I haven't really seen a scene there in many years. Um, there's a few new bands out there that are, are from LA that are doing really well and that um, you know I'm friends with and, and I think um, are going to blow up in the next year or so, but I don't really have that sense or that feel of a scene there right now. I think it's just kind of like it's going like this, like just trying to feel things out to see what direction it's going to go in. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I wish I had a better answer as far as the scene in L.A., but I really don't know what is going on in L.A. right now. So, um, maybe you'll find out next year when you get there. Definitely, since it's your first time going to L.A., you should definitely hit, like, the Whiskey, the Roxy, the Key Club, House of Blues. They're all on the Sunset Strip. Um, you, you know, you're, you'll, you're bound to see some bands, you know, playing there and stuff like that. They, I will say that um, at the Roxy, I think it is, on Monday nights, if I'm not mistaken, they have like this sort of metal Monday kind of thing going on. And every Monday they have like just metal bands. And so that's, that's like sort of one thing that they're starting to kind of develop and get together there. Um, so definitely check that out, The Roxy on Monday nights, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we, we love coming to Ireland. Um, that some of our fans here are just so loyal to us. And I mean, we get emails and messages all the time from our fans out here, and I mean, this is one of our favorite places to come and play. So, in the states, sometimes uh, fans forget about you if you if you're gone for like you know a year or two or something like that. They move on to the next thing. But we found that a lot of the, and this goes for a lot of European you know countries as well. But here in Ireland, for some reason, they stay loyal, and um, that's a really cool thing for a band. You know, um, to know that. We can come back and we're still going to have a packed house and we're still going to have, you know, those loyal fans up in front going crazy and they know all the words to all the, whether it's the new album or the old records, you know what I mean? So that's a really cool thing. So we definitely love coming to Ireland. Always a blast. So we're looking forward to doing this tonight.